Greetings family, Bomani Tamba here family and I'm here in my favorite neighborhood in West Africa and that is East Lagoon. So right now I'm taking a nice uh, the great mighty walk, getting some exercise and just uh, showing you how some of the parts of the neighborhood look. And right now what you got behind me is the East Lagoon Fitness Club. Well it's uh, actually called the Executive Fitness Club. So what you have is, uh, it's, it's like it's completed, but you have what you, you know, what I can say as a soccer field, and then you have some office uh, uh, space. But uh, this entire neighborhood has been a work in progress for many years, and it is just uh, truly beautiful, but I was told anyone that's uh, following us that as time go along, you know, you'll see it grow and grow, but uh, it's a very expensive piece of real estate. I heard about 30 years ago that uh, you, know, you can get land here for literally thousands of dollars. Now try hundreds of thousands of dollars for a piece of land. Uh, so that's the important things we always share with you. Don't wait till the last minute to get into real estate operation development. I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this walking, but uh, this, uh, here just walking in the neighborhood. So after the East Lagoon Executive Fitness Club, you're going to slowly, slowly come up on the uh, police station East Lagoon. And I'm being honest with you, when I literally started coming here, I want to say uh, well over 10 years ago, I remember somebody was joking with me saying that uh, this police station didn't even have vehicles. Uh, or it was just like a little small little station. But that's how it is, uh, time progresses and time moves on. And over to my right, I'm gonna do a quick switch. It's a hospital. And what you're gonna see is just a whole lot of construction. So give it a good five years or so and what you're gonna see is an incredible area and an incredible neighborhood. And yes, I'm on the roadside so it's a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, a lot of cars going by. But this is part of this, uh, me staying back. When I, when I stay back, my goal is always to walk around neighborhoods and just kind of look at it and see how things develop, develop over the period of time. And honestly, everything is in retrospect to what I'm trying to get more of us to invest in, which is our Black Star Pan-African community. So here, this is the other parts of the uh, East Lagoon Fitness Club. A nice little view. And the police station over there. People are saying that uh, we may not need to be recording in the police station, but I'm far enough away to where we can record without them being on me. Because every time I turn around, I got fake security and fake people telling me I can't record. I even got, I almost got into the, with, with this bootleg security at the, uh, the ANC mall earlier. And you know, I had to be on my best behavior because I was gonna give him the business. You know, telling me I can't record. I'm like, yo, you, do you know what we're doing here? We're pushing and promoting the country and things like that. And there's no signs that say we can't record or can't do what we need to do. So he's telling me, well, there's no signs because I'm the one that got to tell you what to do. So I was like, you got a job to basically t stop people from my, like myself to record, to promote and push the country. I was like, that's really intelligent. You know, but uh, and nevertheless, uh, you know me, I try my best not to get into it with village idiots and unintelligent people with third grade education and things like that. So that's what some of these uh, security force people are, unfortunately. Uh, no disrespect to uh, you know, the country and things like that, but this is just a low budget mall security. Like you ever seen that movie that uh, Lauren, uh, Martin Lawrence made mall security. I think uh, I may be wrong about that. So, uh, you know, always big up and respect to real law enforcement and real people doing certain things. But, uh, you know, the thing of it is, you know, go find something better to do and stop disturbing people like myself from recording in the country. Well, even when I get to the airport, sometimes people don't bother me, but you always have one bootleg security guard that always want to just give you a hard time. So what I'm showing you also, family, is the future of how this beautiful neighborhood East Lagoon is gonna look from a perspective of this development. And as I talk about the things that we can get involved in, more so is real estate development from the highest level and also you know, get into construction. Uh, so these are some of the opportunities that we have here in 
Ghana, West Africa, and other parts of West Africa. And West Africa has been, has always been labeled as one of the poorest region and the most underdeveloped region. Let me repeat that: the poorest and most underdeveloped region. But that don't mean anything. Uh, what that means for people like myself is that uh, it gives us, as a people from the Americas, and us as a people here in West Africa, to work together to build something unique and incredible. All right, so this is all of the uh, construction that's going on. So the district police headquarters, Isagorn, and the uh, fitness executive fitness club, it seem to be in the same little area. And we are on Boundary Road. And this is the other crossroad we are. Now when I'm looking right here, I have no idea what's going on. All I see is a bunch of constructions, a bunch of craziness, and I, I probably should be in a vehicle and not walking, but uh, right now I just need to really get out of the vehicle and walk and show you this. So let's say ANC corner, so I, I think this is like a district of the ANC mall, which we were at earlier. And then we see some uh, chicken coops, we see some raw construction and many things going on. But this is just what you see now. As you fast forward to the future, you're gonna see a more developed operation. So I'm always telling us, let's not wait to the last minute to, to get involved in being a part of the future of Africa. I know sometimes we just look at it as rough and, oh well, West Africa, they're known for civil wars, they're known for bad, uh, bad infrastructure, bad this or whatever, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, we, as a, we as black people from the Americas and we as black people in general, this is one of the, this is one of the most highly or heavily populated black population in the entire world. Uh, right here in West Africa, these, uh, these countries are uh, along from uh, Senegal all the way down to uh, Benin, Nigeria. Uh, so I've been from all the way from Senegal all the way down to Benin. I've never been to Nigeria or Cameroon or anywhere past that. Uh, but uh, I'm showing you family that, you know, what you see is a whole lot of development, a whole lot of construction. And uh, we as a people are doing it and we're figuring it out. So what we need to do is uh, put more of our energy into what we can do. So what you see right here is going to be an incredible highway. And I got, I got my folks over here selling watermelons. Like, family, find somewhere in America where you got some watermelons with some seeds. Good luck on that. But uh, you still got watermelons with seeds. So, you know, I always, I always say West Africa is like a hope for the future of black people. And yes, you do have fancy vehicles walking by me, driving by me. And, uh, you know, I got to watch my back because I don't need nobody running me over. But, you know, so it's like, Okay, we have all these very nice, fancy, expensive vehicles, uh, so it's like, we need better roads. So part of the uh, investment of building black African infrastructure is uh, those of us who can, you know, engineer roads and uh, get into construction, you know, we have to just think about uh, building or bringing uh, teams of engineers, construction people together, you know, so we can be a part of the future. So I don't want my brothers and sisters, I don't want my brothers and sisters to be left out in the Americas, you know. So I'm always here reporting. I've been reporting here from Ghana from 2006, and a lot of things that I've said and I've, I've explained and shared have come to pass. So yes, family, Bomani Tamba is a modern-day prophet. You know, you know when, I, when I think about you know my great ancestor, you know Marcus Garvey, which you know when I'm just, let me show you my T-shirt right here. It's, There you go, family, inspired by Marcus Garvey. Every single t-shirt I've ever designed is gonna always say inspired by Marcus Garvey. I really feel like Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, Malcolm X, 
and great visions like that are the greatest pan-African minds ever. And these are the people that we can learn from because they literally just explain it to us. Whether it's Africa for the Africans or black people need to focus on black corporate economics and invest in ourselves. So with all the skills, the talents, the intelligence we have in America and what we have here in West Africa, we got to connect the minds and energy together and understand that uh, we have haters out there that's always want to get in our way. And what we have to do with the haters, we have to stamp, stamp on them, we have to ch stampede on them like a steamroller on them like an 18-wheeler. Because, uh, you know, because that's all they did. They're just there to get in your way, so just run them over. You know, so I'm here showing you right here. This right here, what you're looking at, right here in East Ogon and Boundary Road, is going to be an incredible super highway. Super highway. And I'm telling you, uh, even a year ago or six months ago when I came here, you didn't see much of this going on. But uh, the planning and the development here in all different parts of West Africa is going to grow. There's no stopping it and there's, no, there's, there's nothing that we, you can do. We have to grow and develop. So if we're looking for a part of the world to, the, to invest in, you, know, you can pick the countries you want to pick in West Africa. And that's what we push. But number one, it's the blackest part of the world and it's the part of the world where we have the most incredible opportunities for investment. So walk with me family as uh, we're walking back to our hotel site. So what you're gonna see in a distance, I can't tell if you can see it, but it's pa uh, Palace Mall and that's, uh, that's over there by uh, Spintex. But all of this highway uh, setup is gonna be all connected to where it's gonna be a nice smooth operation. It's just gonna be so beautiful. So this is real live footage that you're getting. And I'm no longer in a vehicle because in order for me to show you the true feel, I have to walk to record it. And then the beautiful thing about it, I don't have any haters telling me I can't record this and things like that because that's one of the things that irritate me. I got low intelligent, low IQ, stupid people always want to run their mouth because they got nothing better to do. You know, like sometimes I run up on some of these people, I was like, where's the sign that say I can't record, I can't do what I need to do? You know? Well, this is a mall and you can't record and you can't do this or whatever. I'm like, you know, what are we back in the 20th century? You know, this is the 21st century. All of us got phones, we got cameras, camcorders, and we all want to share footage and short, share information. And we all want to just you know, let, let uh, those who are not in these countries with us see what's going on in uh, the future of Africa. And as more and more cars, you know, are, are people, as more and more people are doing all these ride shares and people are buying cars. Where a chop on my yacht? So yeah, anyway, uh, I don't know what that guy was saying. Maybe he's saying something stupid to me, but I don't got no time for it. next person that say anything to me about anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick them in the, I'm gonna kick them down a ditch. Now right now, I'm, I'm serious about this. You see the cranes going on. So what you see right here, family, is nothing but development. Serious. So if you want to think about the future, and as I mentioned to you family, we have a whole town called Jahadzi and our community, Black South Pan-African community. And this is where we can put our money and our energy together. And we can really just put it together to where we build modern day incredible infrastructure. And we build it on a level to where we can build our own ecosystem and things like that. So I'm showing you one aspect of development only to open your minds to the future aspect of development. So yes, family, Bomani Tamba here with a classic Africa for the Africans t-shirt inspired by Marcus Garvey, inspired by energy of us, you know, Jamaicans in Africa, you know, from Jamaica to America to Africa, you know what I mean? You know, we're global people, you know, and I'm always telling you, family, you better get that passport. Stop playing around and get that passport because too much of y'all be coming up to me like, oh, Bomani, I love what y'all doing in Africa and everything. I want to go hang out with y'all. I was like, fam, you can't hang out with us because you're a prisoner in America to where you can't leave because you don't have a passport. Don't let these people limit you to the future. So there you go, fam. Look, look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Look at this. This is beautiful artwork. 
And what you're gonna see, I'm gonna come back here a year later. I'm gonna show you the, that everything here is developed. Because I've been, I've been telling people since I've been coming in Isagon for so many years that almost half of what you see did not exist. Yes, it did not exist. So that means people are investing in the country. Now, are those investors us or are those investors foreigners? No? So what we have is a high level of Chinese, Indians, Lebanese investing in the country. But what about us? You know, what about, you know, uh, and I understand it's a little, a little more trickier for us, but you know, I'm always saying, let's, let's figure things out. I'm not here to beat down on us and, because I know one of the issues is, you know, when you have all these other race and nations of people come to Africa to do investments and business, they don't get scammed, they don't get shaken down, but we do. And let me just repeat that one more time. When we have foreigners that come here, Chinese, Lebanese, Indians, and so on that come here, they're not getting scammed, they're not getting shaken down. But we do because it's a black problem. It's a problem with black people connecting and doing business with black people. We look at everybody else as like God saviors and great people. I've had this one Negro PN tell me that we'd rather do business with the white people because black people in America don't have this and that. I was like, brother, you're a fool and I swear, I wish you was right here by me so I can literally turn around and kick him in this ditch right here. Kick him in this ditch right here. Because you know, there's no need for you to disgrace our people. You know what I mean? And I got some people telling me that, oh well, the Chinese, the Indians, and Lebanese are coming to Africa and investing and doing this and that. I was like, well, brother, we're trying to do the same thing too. But a lot of times when we do things, y'all scam us, shake us down, and do bad things to us. And I'm not saying it's a West African problem because if we went to Jamaica or we went to different parts of the Caribbean islands or we went to different parts of America, we have the same issue. So we as a people have to figure this out because it's, un it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable how the foreigners outdo us. And uh, me as a black man, I don't think anybody is smarter, sharper than black people. And I still think, I still feel to this day that we're the greatest people that God has ever created. We're the greatest people that ever existed. But unfortunately, uh, somehow, you know, you have, uh, like I was telling uh, one of my uh, associates today, uh, that I'm going to do a video of the five wickedest empires on the planet. The British, the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, you know, and, and, uh, and so the Dutch, you know, I could add a few more people to that, but I, I think that's, uh, I want to say that's five. So family, it, it, it's nothing personal. The struggles that we have been through is what we have been through. But, but how do we evolve from that struggle? Do we sit here and just let everybody else outdo us? No. Nah. So reach out to us, family. That's why our business is called Africa for the Africans, because that's what we're about. You know, we're here to put black dollars in black hands and connect the minds of our people and work together to build something exceptional. So we're gonna keep it, keep on going, and we're gonna keep on fighting, and we will never give up, and we will never give up, because our children's future and lives is at stake. And let me show you more of this uh, energy going on. As, as I come up on a, <laughs> an uncompleted building, I have, I have no idea what this is, but I'm sure when I come back here in a few months or a year from now. It will be something incredible. It will be something exceptional. There you go, family. Even the corporations are here, you know. You got fun looking Peter Pan here. <laughs> you got dominoes over here. This is a joke. So yes, family, once again, this is Bomani Tamba reporting from Revolutionary Cam, and the journey continues.